Hey guys, today you'll be learning the basics of how to use Intersection Observer in React and to learn that we'll just be going for this basic example of we scroll down and when this image scrolls into view the text changes to say that it's now visible and the way that Intersection Observer works is that essentially it allows you to track elements position in relation to another root element. Now currently by default and it's what we're using in this project the root element is the viewport so when enough of it has scrolled into the viewport that's when the text is changed and this is all configured by us but essentially the way that it's actually implemented it, it comes from a web API so it's not it's not built into JavaScript but it's added on top of JavaScript when it gets rendered into our browser through the V8 engine and that's the reason why it's available in React even though it wasn't really designed for React in mind it's just because React is obviously JavaScript based which is the reason why React has it and it's also the reason why it's kind of tricky to implement in React because it wasn't really designed with React in mind it was just designed in just general JavaScript in mind so therefore to actually use the API you kind of have to work around React's native architecture but that's fine I promise you that by the end of the video through this very basic example you understand how it works and then you can move on to more complex implementations of it, like an infinite scrolling, for example. But we should just start off with a basic project like this, just so that you can master the basics. Okay, so I've just installed a new React project using npm, and I'm just going to type in code dot in the root directory to launch up my source code editor of choice, which is VS Code. Obviously, you can use what you want. And then actually, we'll scroll in a bit. Sorry, we'll zoom in. So you can actually see this and then you know we don't really need this so we'll delete a lot of this stuff because we don't need it index okay we'll keep that but we can we don't need any of this and then we'll need to make sure that we don't get any errors so we'll move to stuff that we don't need Let's place this for now, saying, you know. So we've got some dummy content, and then we'll say npm and start, which is a script. React script, start the local server. And we'll also delete, whilst at it, we'll actually also delete this because we don't need it. App .cl, the, the app styling sheet. I have to delete it there as well so we don't get an error. And then, yeah, hopefully we shouldn't have any errors. Refresh, as you can see, this is what we have. Okay, the first thing that we'll do in our app is we will import useState so that we have so that we can dynamically render content. We're importing a lot more than this later on, but for now we'll just import this. And yeah, again, this isn't a fully fledged out React application, so things are going to be pretty basic. All our styling is just going to be in this one single uh, functional component. Functional components because that's the modern way of making React application, but obviously, you know, if you know what you're doing, then it shouldn't be too hard to adapt this into class components. But what we'll do is we will say const is visible and then set is visible equals use state false will be false by default, but then if the image scrolls into view then we will set it to true. And then inside we'll say it's so if is visible so if it's false we just turn it operator so because remember it has to be expression say so not in viewport if it's false but then if it's not false so if it's true then we'll say in viewport like so so you know that makes sense obviously at the moment it will say so we'll just refresh and what's going on yeah so it'll say not in viewport at the moment because obviously it's set to false and then below that we'll have a div and that's just going to be a gap so we have some space in between the header and the image and as for the image whoops alt oh we don't really need alt to be honest because it's not even it's not even um, a real application but whatever you know we'll just get um, an image from our desktop We'll create a new folder here, img, and then inside, you know, we'll just get this image, which I've already got. Let's put it there. 
and then you know you can say source img because that was the folder name and then we'll say mo binoculars.jpg because that was a name and then we'll, you know we'll style everything in index.css because again it's not really it's not a uh, fully fledged out react application so we'll just style everything in here real quick So what it's going to be, it's going to be position fixed and then the top and the left is there so that it's actually at the top and then it's all the way towards the left so you want it to span all the width so we do width 100% and then after that we'll do display flex because we want to center the text inside and it will be centered both horizontally and vertically like so and we'll set the height to be 100 pixels as well whilst at it and then we'll do gap and that will just be height 100 viewing height and it's already because it's a div it's already 100% um, the width and then we'll target the image like so alt it's alt was simpsons mo binoculars Margin is the auto and to make sure this works it needs to be display block and I believe that display inline images are by default Height auto to make it proportionate Max width to make things responsive So it can't be no bigger than 900 pixels, but then It can't be no smaller than 95% So now I don't know what that was. Oh Yeah, one more thing actually we need to do set some colors, which I forgot to do for some reason. So this one, text value is 6495EF. And that's a blue color, kind of. And then, as for the body, that will be 282B35. And then, yeah, this is what we had at the, at the very start. And then as you can see, you know, and it's working now because it's, it's no smaller than 95% and scales proportionally. Obviously, you know, this isn't really, this isn't a styling tutorial, but you know, you get the idea. We don't need that anymore. Okay, what we'll now do is we'll now import the use ref hook because we need to create a reference to the element, the single element that we want to observe. And it's going to be that image because remember we want to change this text here when it is visible. So we'll say we'll create the reference first and foremost. We'll call it target ref and then it won't have a value but then it will be initialized to hold this image element. So we'll say uh, target ref and then what we'll need to do is we will need to create the callback function that will be used on this by this intersection observer when we create it. Keep in mind this isn't the intersection observer. It takes in two arguments and this is one of them. The other one is the options which we'll create next. And it takes in an ar a single argument and this is going to be the an array of all the elements that is observing. Now our intersection observer is going to be observing one element and that's our image. So what we can do is the array will only have one entry in it because we're only going to be observing one element. So we can simply extract that single element from the array using array destructuring and in case this confuses you, basically that is the same as this. Just extracting you know, the first argument. And then what we'll do is we'll say set is visible. So we'll use that use state method to change the value of that state boolean. And then we'll say entry, the thing that we ex uh, extracted, intersecting. And every uh, item in this array, which comes from the argument, it has that property on it. And that property holds a boolean. And that boolean, the, the value of that boolean will be based on whether it's currently visible in our root elements or not. And our root element will be configured in a second. It will be configured to be the browser. And again, this will be the options. That will be the second argument 
of the Inception Observer. So we set root to be null, and what that means is it will just use the viewport. It will just default to using the, the viewport, and then we'll set root to margin. Well, we don't want it to be any wider than the element itself, so we set zero pixels. And then the third property that it takes in is threshold, and we'll set that to be 0.3. And what that means is essentially one means that the, ele the element has to be completely in the viewport in order for this property to return true. A threshold of zero means that yeah, only the top, literally only like the top pixels have to be visible in the viewport in order for this boolean to be true. Um, and what we'll now do actually is we will say we'll import use memo and the reason being is because this is going to be, this options is going to be a um, argument in the use effect hook which we're about to create and that means that on each uh, re-render basically if we have an object then because objects are reference type again I can't really explain this at the moment because I do expect you to know basic stuff like reference types if you don't then you need to look that up on your own but essentially because it, re it because it re-renders um, essentially pointing to a different place in memory so it thinks that it's a different object even even though it might hold the same values so we'll use this use memo hook to say that we don't want um, this to change on re-render cycles. We want it to use the same memory location. So we'll just say, we'll return it there. And then as for the second argument, we'll just have it like that. So this one, this will never actually re-render. Because if we did put in items here, then it will re-render if the value of whatever item we put in into this array changed. But because we haven't put in anything, it won't actually change. It will just be initialized on component render, on first component render and then from that it will never change and then yeah again I hope that I explained it to you but if, if not then you'll need to look up user memo, the user memo hook on your own and then yeah as you saw we'll import the user effect hook because we'll now we'll use it to create the intersection observer inside and then we'll say const observer equals new inter the exception observer and then and the first argument as I said before will be the callback function the second will be the options and then what we'll now do is we'll say const current target we'll get what we'll extract the elements the image element from the target ref like so and then if current target that's initialized and we'll say observer dot observe and then current target so yes yeah, so only so if this is initialized with the image element then we want to observe it using the intersection observer and remember that's the only element that it's going to be observing and then below this we'll return uh, a function And then we'll say, so what this is, is a cleanup function. Again, I can't go into, I can't explain this in full detail, but essentially it, it runs before every use effect hook after the very first use effect, uh, after the very first time that the use effect hook is called. Um, so if it runs for the second time, then this cleanup function will run before the second time, before the actual code inside this use effect hook and every subsequent time after the second time as well. So what we'll do is, we don't really need to do this actually because uh, this current target never gets unrendered, but we'll just do it just to prevent errors, you know, in case that you are dynamically observing elements which disappear and then, you know, reappear on your page and such. Well, our application isn't designed like that, but we'll just do that anyway just for, um, you know, to prevent errors. And then inside, you want this use effect hook to be to render every time the target ref changes or the options. In our case, the options will never change, and the target ref neither that will never change either actually because again it never gets uh, unrendered, it never disappears, etc. But yes, yeah, so as soon as the application is launched, then this will be run, 
but I don't think but then this this image won't uh, be rendered and then it will be rendered and then target ref will be assigned a value this image element and then because target ref has now been assigned a value this will run again and then now it will be observed because it now holds a value our reference and then yeah that's it pretty much because it never disappears after that so now it should be working so yeah so that's it pretty much what we'll now do though again I know this video is kind of long just because of my explanations but what we'll now do is we will extract this out to a custom hook so that um, you know you get, you get a better idea of how this works so sorry it's better for abstraction so we'll say use element on screen dot js and inside we'll just copy these real quick and then we'll say const use element on screen options target ref it will take in those two arguments so which element we want to be observing with this custom uh, hook and what are the options for the observer contained inside this custom hook and then we'll just copy pretty much a lot of this but not, yeah sorry, I'll actually copy the state as well, sorry, we'll control x we'll copy all of that other than the reference, we won't copy the reference uh, and then what we'll do is we'll say return, we'll change this actually, we'll say options memo and then we'll return the options because that's just going to be an object and then we need to pass it in here now and then because of that we need to change these and I'll press control, I use uh, control D to target the um, other element and target ref, well that's fine, that doesn't need to change what does need to change though is we'll say yeah, we'll say return is visible and then we'll say export default use element on screen and with that we'll we now no longer need this and then we'll import use element on screen and because it's default you know we can just impulse like that no curly braces and then we'll say const is visible see we get another there because it no longer exists but we'll say use element on screen and inside we will use the same options that we used before so root null root margin zero pixels threshold 0.3 and then finally target ref second argument and yes it pretty much and then hopefully yeah it's working as before and as you can see it's a lot better abstracted now so we don't have that cluster of code just in this uh, isolated in this single component and yeah that's it for this tutorial I hope you understood my explanations again I'll post a link in the description to where you can understand more about uh, use memo and the use effect cleanup hooks in case you didn't understand my explanations and I hope you learned from this tutorial and I hope you have a great day peace out